Welcome to part six of Conquest TV. I'm Frankie Vu, and this is your latest instalment in your guide to getting the most of your Warhammer 40,000 Conquest subscription. This time, we'll be looking at issue six, which sees the return of the Death Guard with more Plague Marines and a look at the organization of the dreaded Traitor Legion. We'll also be looking again at how to use our warriors as units on the battlefield. Let's get started. The Death Guard are an ancient traitor legion, and over their 10,000 years of their existence, they've been split into lots of different warbands known as Victoriums, each led by ambitious and powerful Lord of Contagion. In your new background, you'll find out about the Tainted Sons, one of the greatest of these Victoriums, and how they wage war. There's also a breakdown of how Victoriums are organized, and the importance of the number seven to them, the sacred number of their disease-ridden god, Nurgle. Finally, we'll look at different Vectoriums, their colour schemes, and some information about how and why they fight the long war against the Imperium. Now that we've delved further into the background of the Death Guard, you're probably dying to build and paint your new Plague Marines, so let's do that. These Plague Marines are built in the same way as the ones you already have. Parts 1 to 5 make up the Plague Champion. 6 to 9 are used for Plague Marine 2, and the remaining parts 10 to 14 construct Plague Marine 1. As with the previous issues, refer to the magazine to see how you put them together. You already know how to paint your Plague Marines, but let's go through the stages again just as a refresher using the guide in issue 6. Remember to thin your paints and change your water regularly as you prepare your new unit for battle. Give each model an all-over thin coat of Death Guard Green. By the time you finish the third, the first one should be just about ready for the next stage. Now remember, the paint will go from shiny to matte as it dries. Each Plague Marine's weapons, both their guns and knives, should be painted Abaddon Black, along with any cables, armor joints and chainmail. The power pack ventilators, shoulder pad rims, and various icons on the miniatures can be painted in Retributor armor. Check out the guide in issue six for an idea of what parts this should cover. And remember to keep your paint thin so you don't obscure fine details. The knives and chainmail you painted black earlier can now be covered with lead belcher. The black coat gives a great base for these large areas of metal, making it look deeper than it would over the Death Guard green. Be sure to paint any other parts that will work in lead belcher, like weapon barrels and power pack vents. As well as the Plague Champion's face, the Plague Marines have all manner of mutations and tentacles that look great. Disgusting, but great nonetheless, painted in Bugman's Glow. Don't worry about things like teeth, we'll come back to those in future videos when you have the right paints for them. That's your second unit of Death Guard painted and ready to take to the battlefield. And this time, we'll be finding out how they can shoot at different targets as we return to Squad Warfare. Two videos ago, we learned how to move, shoot, charge, and fight with our models in units rather than as single models. This time around, we're going to go over those rules again and add a new one that lets your units split fire to shoot at different enemies. Each of your units consists of a number of warriors who stay together and support each other throughout the battle. They have to move as a group at all times. When a unit moves, each model can move up to the unit's move value. But at the end of their move, each has to be within two inches of at least one other member of the unit. If you need a reminder of how to move your models, check tutorial two in your magazine. When you shoot with units, you follow the sequence of choosing a unit to shoot, then choosing a target, rolling to hit, to wound, and to save, and then removing any models that have lost their last wounds. That's all in tutorial three if you do want a refresher. Some units, like the Plague Marines, have different weapons within the unit. When this is the case, it's best to follow the sequence for each different weapon type individually, as they'll often have different values needed to hit, wound, and save. Before rolling any dice, Remember to check that the model firing can see at least one warrior from the target unit. If one of the firing unit's attacks kills the last model that the unit can see, 
no worries. You can still shoot with the rest of your weapons because we assume they're all firing at the same time and that the enemy is moving around enough that any of them can be hit. In the heat of battle, not all models in a unit might want to shoot the same target. Perhaps there are two enemy units nearby that both pose a threat, or maybe the most obvious target only has a single model left and firing a whole unit against it would be overkill. You can split your fire with units so that they target different enemies. If models in your unit are firing at more than one enemy unit, you should measure range and line of sight to each enemy separately and then roll attacks against each unit separately. If a model is firing more than one shot, from a rapid firing weapon, they must fire all their shots at the same enemy. Issue 6 of the magazine has a reminder of how units work, including these new rules for splitting attacks. It's a good idea to familiarise yourself with these again before moving on to the next mission, because it's a big one. You learn to charge in Tutorial 4. Charging with units works in the same way. You declare a target and they get a chance to fire at the chargers in Overwatch. If there are still models in the charging unit, you roll to see how far they charge, and if they get within one inch of the enemy, they move. When you're charging with a unit, it's possible that there'll be more than one enemy unit in range. If this is the case, you can declare a charge against more than one unit. Be careful though, as every unit you declare a charge against can fire overwatch. When you're moving chargers, they can only move within one inch of a unit they've charged, not any other nearby units who weren't a target of the charge. If your unit is within one inch of more than one enemy unit in the fight phase, they can split their close combat attacks between units. Unlike with split fire shooting, a model with more than one close combat attack, like the Plague Champion, can choose to attack multiple units. To do this, declare how many of their attacks will target each unit before you roll any dice. Roll hits and wounds against different units separately, doing all the attacks against one unit before moving on to the next. Set up the game mat again and ready your warriors for battle. Lieutenant Calcius isn't present in this battle, but aside from him, we'll be using every model in our collection. That's the Space Marine Reavers and Intercessors, as well as our new unit of Plague Marines. So there are now two units of the Plague Marines and the Poxwalkers. In this mission, Stop the Poxwalkers, the Ultramarines are fighting a desperate battle to stop the disease-carrying creatures from breaking through their lines and infecting the human crew of the ship. The Ultramarines' superhuman physiology makes them extra resistant to Nurgle's diseases, but ordinary humans will be doomed. Should the Death Guard succeed, the number of Poxwalkers rampaging around the honour of Ultramar will increase massively, and the ship and her crew will be in serious trouble. Once again, use the What You Will Need box to get the game set up and ready. Let's have another look at the rules for units that you'll use as your warriors move, shoot, charge and fight. In this mission, the Death Guard have to get a single Poxwalker onto one of the Space Marine deployment markers to win. On the other hand, the Space Marines have to stop them at any cost. This might seem easy for the Space Marines, but if they want to kill all the Poxwalkers, they'll have to focus all of their fire on them, leaving the two powerful Plague Marine units free to attack. If you want to add some extra rules to this game, you'll find some in Issue 6, giving the guns of the Plague Marine units extra attacks and abilities. The plasma gun is especially deadly. In fact, it's so powerful it's even dangerous to the Plague Marine firing it. Combine these with all the other extra rules so far for a true test of your tactical might. Good luck. That's all for this episode. Next time we'll be taking a break from building models, but we will have a new kind of paint that we can use to enhance all the miniatures we've painted so far. Shade paints. We'll also be getting our units back on the table to learn about what happens when they want to tactically retreat from the enemy, and we'll be delving more into the creation of Space Marines. I'll see you soon for all of that and more.